so while in the rich countries they see oil as this horrible thing sinful to use mm. and somehow it's hurting human life here it's actually a savior mm. it's actually saving lives it allows you know people to reach hospitals in time mm. it allows people to go to schools they couldn't have gotten to before it allows products you know to for people to use and experience that they would never have had a chance to before it powers the the um, telecommunications generators so that the phone networks work out in remote areas mm. and so now people in very remote places can make clear phone calls and get access to the internet it doesn't matter if they're rich or poor you know they're on their smartphone and uh however or not everybody's got a smartphone so people just have feature phones yeah. but um even those have internet access so mm. suddenly the whole world is open to people yeah. and this has been from that from the still hydrocarbon revolution yeah. so still oil is powering an amazing thing here yeah. which is you know physical mobility it's powering remote uh, telecom access um, it's, it still lights people's homes. Mm. I mean, a lot of people use kerosene still, mm. and it's not healthy for them. It's yeah. bad for their lungs, bad for their eyes. Um, but not everybody has yet gotten these um, solar um, kits, and they maybe are just not growing enough yet yeah. on their farm beyond subsistence to, to earn enough cash mm. to afford to upgrade to solar. and. I, I, I have some ideas of how we'll get past that and yeah. definitely want to talk about that because yeah. I see that as our really big log jam mm. is that we have so many people who are in subsistence agriculture yeah. and they're not able to earn enough money to, to make the leapfrog and, and, it's, and I see a way out of it. Yeah. There is a way out of this right. and it's exciting that I see it and then I just have to figure out how I am going to make everybody realize it's a win, 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 yeah. and make everybody, you know, just not feel threatened. So what's the, what's the focus right now, energy wise? Is that what the focus is? It's charcoal, oil, and like, well, what, what, what does that look like right now? Like, where's it going? Well, the country has uh, been, you know, very fixated on exploiting its oil resource mm. since 2006 when they, just validated it was there okay. and then ever since there's always you know it always seems like it's just around the corner just a few years away and Uganda has been under a lot of pressure from environmentalists and you know to not you know do hydroelectric dams and to not exploit its oil and then they use you know uh, you know the other angle oh, you're going to disrupt all these people's lives and what about the damage to communities and compensating them and so, so well the uganda is certainly going to try and they're going to try to do it probably under the most uh scrutiny that any country in the world has ever had to go through um, to, to try to satisfy every different criticism and worry. Mm. I mean, because that's what slowed all this down, trying to make sure everybody would be happy. Yeah. And there's so many forces, you know, that, you know, can be unhappy about these things I've seen. And um, it's it's too bad because I, I fear we're we're almost out of time to really profit from the oil era. Why is that? Well, because, I mean, the president was totally right that batteries are still expensive. Mm. He's right. And hydrogen is still expensive. But I think, and he's right that natural gas is really probably the most important thing for us now, mm. at least for us to be using. I agree with him on that. But where I, what, where I, maybe he doesn't disagree, but maybe he just isn't aware mm. of how fast changing is the cost reductions for batteries and hydrogen. Offers through that. So there's been a exponential growth of energy density mm. so of storage. Mm. Um, so basically packing more energy into smaller space okay. or smaller weight. Mm. And that's been a, a long term trend in batteries since the 1960s. So you can chart it. It's very consistent when it was lead acid and nickel cadmium and now lithium ion. Each new technology finds ways to 
you know, pack energy more densely wow. and cheaply. And then the more we make of anything, the usual, they call it economies of scale, yeah. they call it the learning curve, uh, we learn to do it for cheaper and cheaper. So the price of batteries has fallen so dramatically over the last you know, 20 years. Mm. So they now are expecting that the price of batteries per energy amount stored will finally reach the price point whereby an electric car, a new one, will be the same price as a new uh, petrol car. How long is that been? They're saying 2023. That's the latest data I saw. And they're saying by 2025, mm. the electric cars will be cheaper. New ones. New, new electric cars will be cheaper than new petrol cars. So that may not hit the average Ugandan um, because mainly we're getting castaway cars. Um, but... Hmm? Yeah, like from the like Japan is you know says these vehicles they you know, are too energy wasting, you know they can't be on the roads anymore in Japan, so ship them off to wherever has you know right hand steering wheels, and so we are a great customer for right hand steering wheel vehicles that other people think are too energy inefficient, so. Uh, so that's going to keep on flowing for a while where we'll get secondhand, you know, industrial, you know, internal combustion engine vehicles while they're moving to electric. 